Hello everybody, Havoc here with another Total War 3 Kingdoms update video. The game hasn't been out a full month, and we've already seen some solid changes in the 1.0.2 beta, and now we've got the 1.1.0 patch beta rolling in with some major changes. The 1.1.0 patch is labeled as a major update, and that means we've got balances and updates in several areas. I'm going to rapid fire off some of the bigger areas of the update, so I want to keep this short and sweet and there is a lot to cover. As always, let's dive in. In terms of actual balances, we have some reduced ammo for hidden axes, hit points increases for a whole host of range units, and a change in mass for medium infantry, as well as cavalry collision damage has been reduced, and that goes for the character side as well. There are cases where sentinels with certain relations could receive well over 100% melee evasion, like 500% or more, that has been addressed and will now no longer occur. A few other character-based balances for the Zhangs and the Yellow Turban leaders. Oh, and Siege vehicles now take AP damage, which works for me. For the player, we finally got some good battle fixes. Dragging multiple units out in turtle formation now works properly, and when you are defending, fire at will will finally be turned on by default. I can't tell you how many times I've yelled at my screen because of that, but kudos to both of those. The battle AI has a lot of love in this update. There is a ton of changes, all designed to keep the AI armies and generals on the move, as there are several instances where AI armies will just sit there and take a beating while you whittle away at them. Their behavior during siege and settlement battles especially has been looked at and revised. We've got less unit stacking from the AI going on, and a better coordination with multiple armies coming through as well. There's about 20 different points addressed in the Battle AI section alone, so I highly recommend checking the blog out. Moving on to the campaign side, Lu Bu is now more expensive, which works for me since that dude is a god on the battlefield. Babies are now more likely to be born from marriages, which was a big frustration from the Total War creators in our Discord channel. The Dong's intimidation resource decays slower, which was another big issue, and the people in power bonuses for the yellow turbans is applied correctly. In terms of the UI, we've got some solid updates that are very much a step in the right direction. Lionheart was very pleased at the UI scaling to 200% for you 2K and 4K resolution people. A big one here as hovering over the commandery food totals now gives you a breakdown of how that total is calculated, something I feel they could do for several other parts of the game as well. Various typos, border boundary lines, tooltips, and UI panels have been updated and fixed across the board. Things like displaying correct satisfaction icons, correct replenishment numbers, campaign map scenes, battle screens, a lot has been addressed in the patch, and as many of you know, since I'm a fan of great UI and video games, I was really glad to see this section. Digging into the diplomacy part of the patch, and it's addressing a huge amount of diplomatic exploits, AI behavior, and cleaning up of various things that occur when engaging in diplomacy. The AI will be less likely to vassalize if they've recently been liberated, and factions that have a lot of vassals already will be less likely to want to seek more. I've yet to see a faction give me an ultimatum in this game, and with this patch it appears that the AI will now be able to issue them more reliably. There are several points addressing diplomatic repercussions where wars and alliances are involved. Rejecting a join war offer no longer puts you in a war with a target belligerent, you can negotiate a peace treaty with an enemy alliance if your allies are destroyed. Transitioning from a coalition to a military alliance soon after forming a coalition no longer incurs treachery. These are issues that the community has had, and while this side of diplomacy was a step up from previous Total War games, there have been some hiccups in the execution for Three Kingdoms, and I'm glad they're looking at them and choosing to fix them. The various things I mentioned earlier were mainly just quality improvements. UI elements that either didn't trigger like they were supposed to, or other elements that were physically covering over other aspects of the game during diplomacy. And that's all I wanted to cover from this blog post. As I said, I wanted to keep this short, so if you want to see everything bullet point by bullet point that I just talked about, and all the things I didn't talk about, head over to the blog post from the link in the description. Overall, the 1.1.0 patch is looking to smooth out a ton of things we've had some issues with from launch. It is also my hope that we will see more consistent patches and updates as a whole from here on out, as quick fixes aren't usually CA's thing. But then again, a Total War game that has sold over a million copies in less than a month 
deserves some constant love and fixing up. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to give this video your honest rating and subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you've tried the 1.1.0 update yet, which should officially go live uh, either this week or sometime next week, and let me know how you're liking it so far. I will also have a link to the previous patch video, which will give you a quick rundown on how to install the beta until it goes live. That's all for now. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one.